tap, we've done the heel turn, and now you're ready to pick up all those gusset stitches along the sides. It's not gonna be that hard, I promise. And then we're going to do a series of decrease rows, alternated with plain, plain rows, in order to decrease all of our stitches back down to the original cast on number. So it all sounds much harder than it is, so just follow along and let's get started. All right, I finished my heel turn and I have, I'm have i ending on a right side row. I have 22 stitches left. Um, the author of the pattern, I believe, has 18, but that's gonna vary for you depending on, obviously, how many heel flap stitches you started with to when you began your heel flap and your turn. So, what we need to do now is we wanna turn the work so that we can start knitting down this edge and picking up these side gusset stitches. Now, one advantage well, the main advantage of doing that slipped stitch right in the beginning is that these are now real, pretty easy to see. So you can go underneath these two legs and pick that up pretty easily. You can use a small crochet hook if you like. I just tend to use the knitting needles that I have already, but that's up to you. If you find it easier to use a little crochet hook, then that's totally fine. This is the part most people hate. It's really not that big of a deal if you just take your time and you're intentional and you're looking for what both legs of those side stitches look like. So this first edge tends to curl around, so you just wanna make sure that you're definitely pulling that whole thing back and you're finding the proper legs to pick up. So now you can see pretty plainly here, this is the stitch I've just knitted into. So there's the both legs of that one that I've just completed knitting, so I'm gonna not do that one, and I'm gonna to look to this next row down. But like I said, if you turn this back so it's not curled, that's much easier to tell where you need to go into, right here. Now I use this other end of my needle just to help me to see where that's gonna be. But honestly, it's not that big of a crisis if you miss a portion of it or you don't pick it up quite right, it's uh, truly not that big of a deal. So you're gonna poke in and you're just gonna knit right into that. So then you're gonna find the next one, go in and knit right into that. Again, if you find a crochet hook to be a little bit more simple, that's fine. There's my next two legs. I like to go under both, not just not just this one, for example. I go under both because I think it's sturdier to do that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna carry on all the way down. And don't get too hung up on how many of those. You know, there should be the correct corresponding number of chain stitches that you're going to try to pick up, whether that's 16, 18, 20, 22, how, you know, however many you did, however many repeats of those back and forth rows that you did. However, I am going to, I don't get too hung up on counting them because I am going to actually pick up another one down here in this corner and show you how to mitigate the possibilities of any gaps or holes when we go to the instep stitches here. So let's go ahead and continue picking those up down the way, and then I'll show you how we're gonna change to the instep, carry on the pattern, and mitigate any potential holes or gaps, okay? So really, with a little practice, it's not that hard. I, I'm just making sure that I'm rolling this back so that I can see where my next two legs are to pick up. Okay, I've picked up all the stitches um, down to the corner, down to where I'm about ready to begin knitting across these instep stitches and continuing in my pattern, charted pattern. However, sometimes, they'll, because this is a stress point on the top of your arch, it, you know, it tends to pull a little bit sometimes, I like to pick up an extra stitch in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is look for the horizontal bar between the stitch on my right needle and this first stitch on that cable. I'm gonna look for this bar and I'm gonna go into it and I'm just gonna pick that up. And I'm gonna knit into the back loop of that so that I twist it and close off any hole that there might be. So I'm gonna pick it up, knit into the back loop, and I'm gonna create that whole extra stitch there, okay? So I'm gonna keep that on the right-hand needle. I don't wanna add any stitches to what I've already got going on here because I know that these are my counts. You know, I'm familiar with the counts that I have there. So. Now I'm just gonna shuffle my magic loop around and I'm gonna continue in pattern where I left off across the top of my charted section. Another thing I wanna make a note of here though real quick is I am shuffling around my magic loop. 
you are still going to keep your stitches separate. Your instep stitches will remain separate and apart from the gusset and the heel. So right now everything looks a little bit funky, but I'm, I'm going to do my magic loop here. And by that I mean, you know, loop, actually physically loop this around. I'm going to knit across there, then I'll loop it around before I pick up these stitches. So. I'll show you when I'm done, but all of these gusset stitches and the heel will all be on one half of my work with these remaining separate from everything else. The other thing I'll mention as I'm going across the instep stitches here is that you, sh if you're following along with the pattern and you ended with row 11 before you began your heel flop, you should be on just a straight knitting row, which is in row 12 across here. So that's kind of a, a nice respite from doing the more difficult things. But if you weren't able to tell that or you weren't sure or you couldn't remember, you know, you can plainly see that that was the last decrease that we did. That was a slip slip knit and then the next one's a knit two together. So there really is a lot of value in learning to read your knitting, so to speak, so that you can, you know, verify that you are in the pattern where you are supposed to be. All right, now you're gonna wanna verify if you're using double points, go ahead and arrange them the way the pattern author indicates. Um, if you're using four double points, you're still gonna have your instep stitches on one, and then you'd have two, three, and four, probably something like that. Um, if you're only using three, then you'll have your instep stitches here, and then this would be a double point, and this would be a double point, and the fourth one's your working needle, same as before. All right, so now I'm just gonna curl my magic loop around here again. All right, I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna lift up that bar between those two stitches, and I'm, as if it were a knit stitch, and I'm gonna knit into the back of it, and twist it so that it takes care of any potential gaps there. Now I like to do another extra one right down here. Just poke it in under that edge where my chain edges are right there. Okay, you can see that nice two legs right under the edge and knit into that. Now this side I think is a lot easier. You can actually see the little holes where you should be able to, to uh, poke your needle in right there. You can actually see the little spot where you want to aim for with your right hand needle. That's pretty easy to see right there. Good. Looking for those little spots, making sure that your edge is not rolled toward the center. So, you know, make sure you curl that back and then you can pretty plainly see where to go pick those up. Now I've picked up all the stitches all the way to the top and I'm ready to knit across the back of the heel or actually now it's the bottom. It was the back. Now it's the bottom of the heel. Now, if you choose to continue the slip stitch reinforcing pattern that we did before, you're gonna want to alternate. You're gonna wanna keep track on a piece of paper or you know, you'll know you be able to actually see it and I'll show you how to read your knitting to determine whether it's gonna be a plain knit round or it's gonna be a slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, alternating round. So I know for a fact that the last one I did when I went across my last time on the heel turn was in fact a slipped stitch round, so I'm just gonna knit straight across this. Now the reason you'll need to alternate is because if you remember when we were knitting the heel turn, we were going back and forth, knitting, and then we were turning our work and purling back. So we were creating a row that was plain stockinette stitch. Whereas now that we've switched and we're back knitting in the round, you'll have to knit an alternating row rather than what we were doing purling before. If you didn't do that, you would just end up pulling that same stitch up and up and up. You would take the slip stitch and you'd just keep pulling it and it would stretch it and that would be not a good thing. So that's why you're gonna need to alternate a plain round with a slipped round. At the same time, alternating decrease round for your gusset with a plain knitting round. So if you plan that right, you're gonna be able to do your plain round all the way around and then do your slip stitch when you're decreasing. So I'll show you that. You might wanna put a beginning of the round marker here so you can help yourself remember. Um, the reason I don't do that is just because I've learned to read my knitting and I guess I really need to. Um, right, you'll see. So now I've continued across the heel stitches and I'm knitting now down the side, the first side of my gusset. So what we're gonna wanna do is knit all the way to that corner and stop three stitches before the end. 
Now the pattern instructs you to do this a little bit differently and you can either do it my way or her way. It's not a big deal. I think, um, I kind of, uh, truthfully, I kind of skimmed through her instructions for the gusset because I always do it my way. <laughs> um, I think she just has you knitting a plain around first, which sometimes makes this easier, but either way is fine. If you're using double points, go ahead and follow her instructions for your stitch counts on each needle. Um, and if you're following along with me or you're using double points and you've cast on more, you know, your stitch counts are going to vary depending on how many stitches you have cast on, how many you picked up along the edge due to how many you did on the heel flap, etc. So here I'm knitting, as I said, until I get to three stitches before the end of my corner before I begin the top of the foot stitches. And then I'm going to do my decrease, which when it's here, it's a knit two together. And that creates a, a decrease that leans to the right. And the way that you remember which one you want to do is I always do the knit two together when you have three left. It's a right leaning decrease that points toward the toe. You, always, you want your decreases on your gussets to point toward the toe. So the way that you can help remember that is this is the leg of your sock here. And so we're gonna start knitting the foot out this way, right? So you want your decrease to point toward the toe, which is gonna be out here. So now we're gonna keep in pattern knitting across the top of the foot stitches and then we'll do our decrease on the other corner as well. All right, I've knitted across the top of the foot stitches and now I'm to this corner where I'm gonna begin my decreases on this side of the gusset. So that my first task is to knit one, then I will slip slip knit or create a left leaning decrease that again is gonna to point toward the toe. So what I wanna point out here is now you can more clearly see how I still have the instep stitches on this front half here and then I have all of the gusset and heel stitches together on the other half of my magic loop. So you arrange that how that's comfortable for you, but that's the goal. And then my magic loop loops are at the corners here of the juncture of the instep and the rest, the gusset. All right, so again, here I'm just gonna knit one plane and then I'm gonna do my slip slip knit. And this is a little tight and awkward. You're gonna have to maneuver stuff on and shuffle a little bit. It, it does feel a little awkward in the beginning until you get some of these stitch, the stitch numbers reduced, or sorry, uh, you know, you get your overall stitch count back down. It is gonna feel a little tight and squirrely. Um, so the goal here is to decrease, keep doing this, and decrease down to your original circumference amount or your cast on amount. So for me, that's gonna be decreasing down to 80. So this causes some shuffling. You've got all your stitches curled around here. So I like to kind of pull this through and I actually do jam all, I shove all of the stitches up onto the, the actual needle portion of my magic loop and I just crinkle them on up there. Cause to me that's easier to just straight knit through them. Okay, so right now I'm going back up to the back of the heel stitches or the actual bottom of the heel stitches and I'm going to begin my slip stitch reinforcement pattern because I am going to choose to carry that on down the bottom of the heel portion of my sock. So if I was going to put a beginning of the round marker, I think I would do it coming up here. I'll show you. I would do it at the beginning of the heel section of stitches so that I can easily determine when I'm going to switch from a reinforcing slip stitch round, which is also a decrease round and when it's just a plain knit round. So for me, I would do that. Actually, I would put a new marker. I would do that right now, right here. And I can tell that because you can see this edge where the decreases were when we turned the heel. I just shove a marker right there. And that lets me know that that's the beginning be where I'm gonna start my active round, if you will, as opposed to a resting round. Okay, let me correct myself here because I didn't plan mine as well as I maybe should have. I'm gonna make a correction. I am gonna do the reinforcement on the bottom of the heel, but I'm gonna knit across here so that my resting round and my active round ends up being coordinated between 
the back bottom of the heel stitches and my decreases. So right now I just finished doing decreases, so I want this one to be a resting round. So go ahead and put your marker right here if you're wanting to do this with me. And we're gonna just knit a plain round all the way around. And then we will have matched up our sections of our sock to be the active round and the resting round. I hope that makes sense. Uh, drop me a comment below or in the groups if you have questions about that. Um, alternatively, you can just cease doing your slip stitch portion here and just knit this plain if you wish. Um, you know, you will have already provided some reinforcement on the very bottom of the heel, most likely where any holes would occur through wearing. And so if you just wanna be done with that and you just wanna knit around and only worry about the decreases, that's totally fine. You're the boss. All right, I've knitted down the side of that gusset and I and now I can tell that my previous one was a decrease because I can see the knit two together right there. So I know that I'm just gonna knit on by. This is a plain, plain knit round. And that, fortunately, also coordinates with my chart and my plain knitting round across the chart. And I know that, one, because I am arranging it to be that way because I'm the boss of my knitting. But I know that too because you can tell I just did a decrease there. So I'm just gonna knit on by and this is gonna be the resting round, not the quote, what I'm calling the active round, okay? Where you know you have to do all the stuff on the active round. You gotta do your chart decreases, you gotta be mindful of all that. Plus you're gonna do your gusset decreases. Plus if you choose to reinforce the heel, you're gonna do that. So on your active round, you're actually gonna have three areas that you need to be mindful of. So the active round is gonna be doing stuff on the chart, decreasing the gussets, and reinforcement on the heel stitches. If you don't wanna do all that, skip the heel stitch thing. All right, I have reached the ending of my resting round, and if I had a beginning of the round marker handy, that's where I would put it. So now I'm gonna go across the bottom of the heel stitches, and last time we just knitted straight across, so this time we're gonna continue with the reinforcement pattern, which is slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, and so forth all the way across. So you have a marker at the beginning of this section. I would also suggest that you put one at the end of this section. Remember whether that was 18 stitches for you or 20 or 22, however many that ended up being. You can also see it once you get a ways into it, but definitely put a marker if you're more comfortable doing that. And if you're unsure where to start, you know, you can plainly see the columns and you can follow that up and you can know that that was a slip stitch and so it's gonna continue to be a slip stitch. And I am about to get to the end of my slip stitch pattern. That was the last one I'm gonna slip, then I'm gonna continue knitting down this side until I get to three stitches before the end. This is my active round for all areas of my sock. That's how I'm choosing to do it. So that means that I'm gonna decrease my gussets. I'm gonna do row three of my chart, the active rows of my chart. I'm gonna decrease the other side. So it's the active round for all areas of my sock. So you're just gonna continue on in this way with the various components of your sock. Now read your knitting. You can tell that there was my earlier decrease, then there's my resting round. So now I'm gonna do another knit two together, right leaning increase the po points toward the toe, knit the last one, and go across your, your top of the foot or your chart stitches here. Okay, I'm on my left side. I've just finished knitting across the chart stitches on row three for me, and I'm gonna knit the first one, slip, slip, knit, because I'm making a left leaning decrease that points toward the toe, and I'm just gonna knit my way up the side of the gusset toward the back of the heel and my beginning of the round marker, if I had one. <laughs> and then I want to show you, uh, the last thing I wanted to show you this time is how you can tell, ver how you can verify which round was your reinforcement slip stitch pattern on the heel stitches and which one was your plain resting round. Now, when we get up here, you can, if, if you don't remember, if you set your knitting down or you get interrupted and you're wondering, okay, wait, what was that? I already showed you how you can see your decreases.
but you can also tell on the back of your heel stitches whether it was a reinforcement one or not. Now, when you do the slip, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, it kind of, they'll, the stitches will look kind of paired together because you're slipping one right over and knitting one. But more importantly and more obviously, you can tell on the back of your work where you've carried the yarn across. You can see where you've carried across the one that you slipped. Hopefully you can tell that. You can see that that bump right there, which is like a pearl bump, has been carried across the one that you slipped. You can also see it when you get the stitches kind of between. So you can look right, look right there. You can tell that that's the bar. It was carried across the back of this stitch that was slipped in the last row. So I hope that helps a little bit and you can learn to read your knitting. I mean, that's probably the most transformative thing that ever happened to me was learning and observing what happened when I did various techniques. So if you learn to read your knitting, it will serve you, I mean, it'll be so convenient. You won't wonder where you are when you set your knitting down. You'll understand the patterns better and how things translate to the, your physical work. So you're just gonna continue alternating active round and resting round until you get all of your stitches, you do enough decreases that you're back to your original cast on number. All right, you can see where I have finished with my gusset decreases. So all I've done is gone round and round and I have alternated my active round with my resting round, doing the decreases at the beginning of the needle and then over here at the end of the needle. And so now I'm back down to the original number of stitches that I cast on when I started my sock. And I've tried it on my daughter and it fits her great. Now I decided to maintain that slip stitch heel reinforcement until I got back down to my original number of stitches. So you can see where that stops and that's at the same point at which my gusset decreases stop also. So now all I'm doing is knitting round and round, maintaining the pattern on the top of the foot. Okay, well done. You're pretty much home free now. All you have to do is continue knitting the foot of the sock, maintaining that pattern on the top of the foot until you get to about an inch and a half short of the desired overall length. So if you're not sure what that is, you can Google shoe sizes in inches. There's charts you can find online that'll tell you that. If the sock is for you, then by all, me by all means, try it on. So next time I'll show you how I like to make a nice rounded toe and then we'll do the use the Kitchener stitch method to graft it shut in a seamless way. Okay, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.